Does this work? It must go. Uh, hi, yes, uh, I can see your slide. <clears throat> okay, so uh, it's time, so let's start the uh, next talk. The next speaker is uh, Norihiro Izuka from Osaka University, and he is going to talk about wormholes and holographic decoherence. Okay, please start. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so thank you very much for the organizer, especially Takanegi-san, for arranging such a wonderful workshop. It's a bit unfortunate that we do it on the uh, Zoom. Uh, hope in the next time we can gather people together at Kyoto. <clears throat> okay, so the title of my talk is Wormhole and Holographic Decoherence. And as usual, I'd like to uh, give several runners before uh, my talk. So um, this is based on the one paper. Let's see. How... Yeah, okay. So this is a paper uh, which we put on the archive uh, last December. But we found some error, uh, which is pointed out by the kind referee of the JHEP, and we correct it. <clears throat> and the corrected version should appear soon. And uh, so that's based on the uh, version two, which uh, I'm gonna talk based on this result, okay? So don't, don't, don't look at the version one, which has some error, okay? Now, this is based on the collaboration with uh, uh, Anigawa-kun, okay? And also Tamaoka-kun and Ugajin-kun. As you know, the Tomonori Ugajin, he's an organizer, so everybody probably knows, okay? Kotaro, he gave a talk yesterday, okay? So probably he, you also know it. So I want to answer the, the youngest collaborator, Anigawa-kun. Uh, he's uh, still a student uh, of both of the group, but he's pretty good. <clears throat> okay, done. So let me begin with the background and motivation. Okay, so that's the first part. Good. So wormholes are interesting saddle point in the gravity path integral. So what do I mean by saddle point? Saddle point means that it's a solution of the equation motion of the Einstein equation. Okay. Now, this is a picture which I stole on the uh, internet, but apparently totally different position in space is somehow connected by this wormhole, which plays a role of the shortcut okay, of the space time point. So even though they play, wormhole plays an uh, interesting role in phenomenology, okay, for example, she this nice review. The main focus in today's talk is the implication of the space-time wormhole for the holography. Okay, that is a topic which we're going to discuss today. So before we start, okay, before we start with a key question, let me give the overview of what we know about the connection between wormholes and entanglement, which is a key topic in this conference. Okay, so. I'm very impressed with this Mark Van Lamsdong's uh, the review, or well, well, no, the, the article paper, okay, which appeared almost 10 years ago, and that say the following thing. So quantum entanglement is an indispensable ingredient for the emergence of the space smooth geometry in semi-classical limit of the gravity, okay? What they claim is that without quantum entanglement, we might have only disconnected the geometry instead of the smooth connected to geometry, okay? So where this came from, okay? Let me give some review. So the basic idea came from this paper and that claims that the sum field double state, okay? Is equivalent to what dual to the uh, einstein rosen bridge. So where this came from, okay? Suppose we consider AD safety, okay? Now say this is a boundary, okay? This is another boundary. And correspondingly, there's a one bulk and the other bulk, okay? So this boundary state is supposed to be dual to this bulk, and this boundary is supposed to be dual to this bulk, okay? Now, suppose you sum over, okay, these different state, which is labeled by the I left, correspond to this state, and the I light on this state, okay? And correspondingly, due to the idea safety, there's a corresponding bulk state, IL here, and also IR in the bulk state in R. 
Now you sum over with some appropriate weight of all such a thing. What this mean? This gives an entangled state between left and right bulk states. Okay. Now it is well known <coughs> from the 70s by Israel, okay, that suppose you look at the bulk two point, say here and here. Okay, the smoothness of this region is connected. Or I would say the smoothness of this region, this point and this region, smooth in here, is represented by the strong entanglement between this left region and right region. Okay, and this is the essential key. The smoothness of the space time two point is related to the highly entangled entanglement between the two spatial states. Is the key point which is used in many places, for example, in the page curve discussion, people use it. And also in the AMPS firewall paradox, this is a key point. Okay. So the key point in here is that this state and this state, if you sum over and then create an entangled state like this. So this is a, has a name, it's called the sum field W. And sometimes we write it as TFD. Okay. Now, this state, which is highly entangled between here and here, gives a smoothness of this and this point. Now, according to the AD shifty, this bulk state, this bulk state is dual to this bulk boundary state and this boundary state. So suppose you have the two boundary theory, okay? And then the state of boundary one and boundary two is highly entangled in this way, okay? The claim is that which is dual to this bulk state, which is smoothly connected between here and here through the bulk. And as you know, we study in the GR textbook, this is a Einstein Rosen bridge that is here. Okay. So there's no singularity between this point and this point, and it's smooth, but we know it's not transversal. Traversable. I'm sorry, it's not traversal. Okay. And it's hidden behind the horizon. And especially this point, and that's exactly the Liu Takai and surface, and that gives an entanglement between this and this. So the claim in this author is that the sum field double state of the boundary state, since it's dual to sum field double of this and this, which is dual to the smoothness of this region, sum field double state is dual to the einstein rosen bridge of the wormhole in arc. Okay, so that's a motivation. So manifestly, this example shows that if the two object or two degrees of freedom are highly entangled, it is related to the one hole which smoothly connected the two vision. Okay, so that's a motivation behind this paper. And later it's uh, claimed as ER equal EPR connection. So ER is a, I shall say, bridge of the one hole, and EPR is an entangled state. Okay. <coughs> so all I'm saying is that we have a two degrees of freedom. Okay. If it's highly entangled, one spin and the other spin is highly entangled, so this somehow represents the entanglement. Okay. And that is dual to the space time wormhole, which is not traversable and which is shielded by the horizon. And that's exactly the new Takani surface. Okay. So, what uh, these people claim is that if you have, say, two boundary, Okay. And if the RT surface is big, okay, this surface is big, that's the event horizon seen from the observer living in here. Since this is a, a RT surface, which represents the entropy of the entanglement between left and right, if this entanglement is big, okay, entanglement is big, entanglement entropy is big, as a result, this area becomes big, okay, then it's smoothly connected in more larger region. But if the entanglement entropy is small, okay, RT surface is small, then the connection between here is only restricted to this tiny region. Okay? So that's the main background for how the strong entanglement between one degree of freedom and the other degree of freedom is connected to the more smoothly connected to geometry of the one hole. So this is a background. And now given this, we would like to ask the following question, okay? 
It's true that the quantum entanglement gives the smoothness of the wormhole, as we have seen in the uh, sample double state. Classical correlation, okay, <clears throat> which we sometimes saw on the mixed state, okay, can also play a similar role in some situation. Okay, suppose you are blind to the so much detail of the quantum state. Sometimes classical correlation might play a similar role to the quantum entanglement. Now, of course, if you fully investigate the difference, we can distinguish it. Okay, but suppose we do say only one experiment for given state. Now we cannot distinguish it. Okay, if you have many, 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 many of the same state, you can distinguish. But if you give just one state. And then you just pick up the result, then in such a simple situation, it's very difficult to do research. So the question we would like to understand in this work is that instead of the quantum entanglement, which you have seen in the sum field of state, if we have classical correlation okay, of the mixed state, does that give the similar smooth geometrical description in the dual gravity? And this is the main question we want to understand in this project. Okay. And in fact, actually, a similar proposal was made by the Berlinde, and this paper gave us the motivation. He also he claimed that the classical entanglement in some situation, at least in the low energy observer, can play the same role of the uh, sum field. Okay, so we want to investigate this aspect more. And that is a question. Okay, are there any questions? <clears throat> no. Okay. So the idea is that to understand this, we consider the following decoherence process. Okay, decoherence simply means that we want to destroy the uh, entanglement. Oh, there's a question, please. So, uh, so are you talking about classical correlations through the wormhole? Uh, classical correlations through the wormhole. I mean, okay. So entanglement is dual to the wormhole. Yeah. So we want to somehow destroy this entanglement and see how does that affect to the wormhole structure, whether it's disconnected or not. That, that's a question. Is that clear? Or we want to ask, suppose you have two degrees of freedom, which is classically correlated, not quantum, like mixed state. Okay. Does that give a similar wormhole effect? That's a question we want to understand. Is, yeah, because you mentioned fell in this work, but, but there the, the situation is that you still <laughs> Quantum correlation on the external external part of the wormhole. If you embed the two-sided black hole in some ambient space, you have okay. still some correlation outside. But what do you mean outside? So if if you find, for instance, if you let both both uh, CFTs or both black holes radiate into the external external space, mm -hmm. and uh, you have left radiation and right radiation, mm -hmm. but you correlate both both mm -hmm. parts, mm -hmm. so there is some quantum correlation with the right and left part. Okay. So that is actually the reason why you still have some wormhole. Well, okay, we can discuss this later, but what my understanding or my collaborator and old understanding is that even if we have the, some classical entanglement, not like quantum entanglement, as you mentioned just now, that at least for the low energy observer, which she only is a cold subspace technically, its effect is as if it's a quantum effect and can see the wormhole. But that just gives the motivation, and we understand it from our own point of view that how the quantum entanglement, if we destroy the quantum entanglement, does that leave the connected wormhole in the dual description? Or if so, does that still leave some classical entanglement or classical correlation between these? And that's a question we understand. Okay, I see. Thanks. Thanks. Any other question? Mr. <coughs> Weston, please. Hi, um, I have a question. Uh, so I'd like to make sure that uh, you mentioned that uh, space time can uh, well, disconnected and connected. And by disconnected means, by disconnected, you mean that space time itself is con disconnected, or do you mean that uh, causally disconnected? Uh, no, 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 not causally. Disconnected means literally disconnected. Literally connected. Ah, I see. So what I'm considering is that given the fixed time, okay, yeah. fixed time. I consider the geometry of the two point. Okay, if there's a space like trajectory, space like, not cosine, space like trajectory to connect point A and point B, okay, then we say it's connected. No, right. no, 
it's only fixed time, space time structure. And then if there's a space trajectory from A to B, it's connected. Okay, so and even if the causally disconnected still, it can be connected in your right, sense. Right, right. Look, for example, right. here right. and here is not causally connected. Right. right. But mm -hmm. we say this is connected. But on the other hand, here, this and this in the fixed time is disconnected. That's what I mean. I see. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, hello. Um, this is a naive question. So if you consider a process to make an entangled state, there will be a gravitational dual. And is it a wormhole formation? So, sorry, could you repeat your question again? I, I... I mean, so uh, I'll say, uh, suppose, uh, suppose there is uh, some process to make an entangled space, uh, state, uh, state uh, between two regions. And uh, probably uh, we expect that uh, there is a dual phenomena. And uh, my question is, is it wormhole formation? Well, we can say that, but th there's an important uh, uh, key point, and that is quantum entanglement. I would say quantum, mm -hmm. just to emphasize quantum nature. Quantum <laughs> entanglement cannot be created by so-called uh, uh, LOC, local operation, uh -huh. communication. So, for example, in the usual GR process, which we consider only the LOCC, local uh -huh. operation, classical communication, then it's impossible to create. Ah, impossible. Uh -huh. I see. So, so in principle, if you do some quantum stuff, uh -huh. it's beyond the LOCC, we can create one hole. We can uh -huh. create an element correspond to the one hole. According oh, I see. To but that's usually not allowed in the Usual classical sense. Ah, okay. So you mean that uh, to make a wormhole, uh, uh, <coughs> quantum gravity process is required? Oh, quantum yes. gravity or not, not classical? Not classical. Okay. Okay. Thank you. you. Okay. So, no more. So, let me proceed. So, I hope the question is clear. So, so given this motivation, we want to understand if we have the connected geometry, okay? Is it supported only by the quantum entanglement or even classical correlation can give support for this connected geometry? That is a question we want to understand. Now, I should mention that we cannot understand completely this question, but we just give some evidence of the answer. Okay, so that's the talk. So the idea is for me. Okay, to understand this, we consider the following decoherence process. As I mentioned, decoherence is to destroy some quantum entanglement. Okay. It's hard to create entanglement, but we, we can destroy it, okay? Suppose we start with an entangled state, okay? Suppose we start with an entangled state here and here, that's highly entangled, okay? And that's equal to this one hole. <clears throat> now, we disturb this system by attaching this to the heat bus. So let me put the heat bus in here. Now, you, you see this and this is equal, your. So we have a heat bus. Now, if we attach it, okay. Now, of course, heat bus do something, okay. Some of the entanglement here escape into here, and so on, so on. So we usually expect the entanglement between this and this in the beginning will be destroyed or goes into the somewhere in the heat bus, okay. So that's the process we want to consider. By this process, how does that influence to the shape of the connected wormhole geometry? Okay, that's a question. So let's do be more specific, okay? So I already mentioned that we do this decoherence by attaching to the external degree of freedom, which plays a heat bus or environment. Good. So this is what I mentioned already, okay? Now this is the process. Now the next question is that what we want to prepare for the heat bus, okay? And then how do we attach it? Once we have done all of the evolution, in principle, we can follow it. So let's start with the ADS eternal black hole, okay? Here and here, that's black hole. That's dual to the sum degrees of freedom, which is entangled, okay? Now let's call this bipartite system as A and B in our notation, okay? So A and B is a boundary degrees of freedom. That's dual to the, through the emergent bulk, this uh, connected geometry, okay? So this is the situation. Now we prepare the heat bus. So 
what we should prepare for the heat bus. Uh, there is no unique choice. You can do whatever you want. But our choice is we prepare exactly the same degrees of freedom as a heat bus. Okay. So we call it as an auxiliary bipartite system, A prime and B prime, which is exactly the same degrees of freedom, a slightly different property. Okay. Slightly different property means the following. But before that, let me just give the picture. So we have A and B entangled state dual to the connected wormhole. Now we prepare the heat bus by exactly the same degrees of freedom. Okay. So if we have A and B spin, for example, we prepare A prime and B prime spin, which is entangled as is here. And then now we state this plays a role of a heat bus for our purpose. You can prepare as a heat bus, but this is our choice for the alternal system. Now, we slightly uh, change the property compared with here and here. Otherwise, if it's totally equivalent, maybe it doesn't do anything. So what do we do is the following. <clears throat> Good, so let me uh, say that. So this A, B, the original entangled bipartite system, we prepare the heat bus A prime and B prime, which plays a role of the heat bus as a whole. Okay. Now we allow the energy flow between G's two. That is our process of the decoherence. So what is the motivation to do such an energy flow? Okay. I just say energy flow, but it doesn't mean energy flow between here and here only, and also energy flow between here and here only. But that does not limit our interaction from A and A prime only. Okay? This involves a whole process of the decoherence. Even though naively you may think that there's an energy flow from let's see, here to here, also you may say that the interaction is restricted to here. No, it influences everything. Okay? The intuition is that this and this is highly entangled, and this is this is highly entangled. But as you know, from the monogamy of the entanglement, okay? Once you do something to disturb it, then the system totally changes it, right? So once you do something between here and here, okay? It does influence everything because once you somehow spread the entanglement, disturb this and this entanglement, it, it does influence everything. So we have to follow all of the evolution, okay? And that's what we're gonna do it from the bulk du uh, dual gravity point of view, okay? Good. So that's a picture. And now I mentioned that we prepare a slightly different property for the heat bus. So let me explain what do we mean by that, okay? So this A for the observer here, this bulk look like just usual black hole whose entropy is given by this bekenstein hawking entropy, okay? That is equivalent to the RT formula. So for this observer, you see you have the horizon and then that has some temperature and look like thermodynamical object as a black hole, okay? For this observer, who is sitting in the uh, heat bus, uh, A prime system, again, see some temperature. So what we prepare is that we set the temperature for this observer TA and TA prime is not the same, okay? So what do we expect from this? For this observer, see some black hole. Okay, with some thermodynamical equivalent system, thermal system in this picture, in this dual system with some given temperature. Here. But for this observer, okay, see again the same thermal state, but with a different temperature. Now, suppose we choose the temperature of the A and A prime different. And if we allow the energy flow between these two, what do we expect? Well, we expect the temperature reach to the same temperature in the later time. Okay? So this is our decoherence process. We prepare in such a way that the temperature of here and here is initially different, but as time goes on, as, as things goes on for the decoherence, I would avoid using time. Okay? Then in the later stage, TA and TA prime become the same along this decoherence process, how the whole geometry will evolve, okay? That is a dual question of this question from the geometrical viewpoint. 
And this is a question we want to understand in this setup. So I hope our setup and question is clear. Are there any question? <coughs> yeah, so this is the picture. A and B originally, and then thermal bus. And then we attach it to equivalent, uh, to, to make the temperature the same between A and A prime, and also B and B prime by the energy flow. And then we see how this whole geometry will evolve. That is a question. And if there's a question, it's a good time. Oh, good. So let me proceed. <clears throat> so I just tell you the main result, main message from this work. So what we obtain at the end of this decoherence process is that you see that the so whole process, this is one hole, this is one hole, you attach it, and then you have the complicated four boundary one hole, and you see how this temperature of TA and TA prime become the same at the later stage of the coherence. The same is true for the TB and TB prime. How does it evolve? In the end, we find once temperature of the T and T A prime becomes the same, and so does T B and T B prime. Okay, we find that this geometry is somehow disconnected. Okay, so in other words, this length shrink and pitch it off at the end of the decoherence. Okay, so the topology change. Okay, what 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 topology change means that it's a the last stage. It's become like this. This length become zero in general. It's approached to zero. Okay. So what this means is that the entanglement, original entanglement between A and B, which is A and B's connection, is lost at the end of the decoherence. Okay. So we want to see how the moduli of the four boundary one hole will evolve by this decoherence process in a very restricted modular space evolution. Okay, we cannot consider all of the modular space and how it evolves, and that's a beyond our work. But in some generic, in some, some reasonable setting, which we follow the, how the modular space evolves, and then in general, we reach the conclusion that this and this is disconnected. As a result, the entanglement connection between A and B is lost. Okay, that's the main message we have to show. Okay, so shrinking, yes, that's the main message. <clears throat> Good. So in this setup, we study this in completely by the ADS3 and shift to setup. And why is that? Because ADS3 is so simple bulk, okay? Now you can do many things like constructing one hole. In higher dimension, constructing one hole solution itself is a very tough question, okay? Not known so many uh, one hole solution, but in ADS3, you can do it easy. And how we can construct the one pole compu configuration, I'm going to leave you quickly in data. Okay, so the main result. This is the main result I already mentioned that the, the connection, smoothness of the connection between geometry A and B, okay, which is originally uh, smoothly connected through the entanglement, which is a one hole, origin one hole, and so is A prime and B prime, which is connected through the one hole. That's completely lost. And what we found, what we're going to show in the end, is that A and B is disconnected, and so does A prime and B prime. And then we're going to show that this implies that both classically and quantum mechanically, the correlation between A and B is lost, and so does A prime and B prime. Okay? So not only quantum mechanical level of the entanglement, the even there is no classical correlation between A and B at the end of the decoherence. Okay, that's we're gonna show it. So that's the main message. Okay. So we somehow support the idea that we need a custom entanglement instead of the classical. So that's the main message. We're gonna show it now. Okay, so before I go ahead, if there's any question, this is a good time. Otherwise I will do a bit more technical stuff about how to construct one. No? Good. So let me proceed. So this is a cooking recipe for the 3D one hole. Now, um, for the cooking recipe, as usual, you have to prepare the ingredients. Now, the ingredients the ingredients you need is a one piece of the ADS3 geometry. Now, scissors to cut out the space, and then glue to attach the space. That's the only thing. You don't need many of the ADS3. Just one ADS3, just like one piece of the paper, and you cut, 
attach and so on so on and then you can create one more just like one piece of paper you cut and attach you create the shield okay the same thing you do it like elementary school so this is recipe is a bit technical for the people who are not gr oriented people so if you uh, find this is a bit technical never mind what i'm going to do is the same as as i mentioned just prepare one piece of the paper okay which is r2 maybe you can say okay then cut the space okay and then attached by the glue you construct the cylinder cylinder looks like two boundary one hole okay what i'm going to do is just slightly technical version of this constructing cylinder from the flat space okay no more than that okay that's i will explain good so prepare ads3 and i hope some of the people who know ads cft know ads3 so ads3 is this one everybody know it okay well everybody who are familiar with ads safety knows it okay so there's a two expression for this embedding so ads3 is embedded in the four dimension one is global and the other is a point coordinate i don't use a global one i use only the point coordinate in this talk okay so point is this the presentation okay you don't need it okay but what i want to say is that x z t is a uh, space time uh, position okay so the metric in the end become like this so the important point is that g is a coordinate for the emergent bulk and t and x is a boundary two-dimensional uh, space time okay good so g equal zero is a boundary good now as each by some pointed out we are interested in the space like one hole okay we consider some fixed time configuration of the space okay if two point is space likely connected we gonna say that this is a uh, connected connected geometry okay we don't consider the causal structure so we want to consider some t equals zero slice okay and see how the geometry space like geometry looks like so we are interested in t equals zero okay or any time any fixed time well, at least we are interested in the fixed t equals zero in Poincare coordinate. That's the slice we are interested in. You can consider any other slice, but this is our choice. So t equals zero, we just plug in t equals zero, and that become in your notation v equals zero. Okay, remember u, v, x, y is an embedding coordinate of the ADS3 in four dimension. Okay. Now t equals zero simply means that ADS3 is become this. Okay, only space in one boundary in the bulk we have z. Okay, so that's it. The metric is convenient to represent as X plus IZ as a capital Z, and the metric simply become this. Okay. Now, if you neglect this warping with this Z, it just become a plane, okay? As simple as this. But AD3 has a boundary at Z equals zero, so the geometry is bounded by Z bigger than zero. Okay. G equals zero is a boundary. So given this, if we restrict to G equal bigger than zero, that means imaginary of the capital G is bigger than zero, and that's just upper half plane, okay? So what is AD3? AD3 is simply the upper half plane. So that's it, so this is AD3. So this is a boundary. This is a space-like position of the boundary. I consider time equal to zero in the Poincare coordinate, and this g, small g, is a bulk emergent direction, and this is a boundary. Now it looks like simple upper half plane. How do you see the warping? Okay, this is a conformal map. So that means we just neglect this warping. Okay, why you can do that? Because it doesn't influence to the causal structure usually. Okay, but we don't consider causal structure because we consider fixed time. But anyway, this is how we represent. So in this here, we have just a bar. Now notice that warping factor diverge in here, okay? Because this is a region where imaginary of the capital G goes to zero. That means this becomes zero. So there's a huge warping, which is implicit in this picture, okay? So that's a AD3, just a bar, okay? As simple as this. Now, what we're gonna do is, as I mentioned, prepare the whole paper, cut, identify the point, create cylinder, okay? This is the thing which we're gonna do it, okay? So what we are doing here is that we just prepare the AD3, 
that is just upper half plane, and then look at the isometry of the ADS3. Once you find the isometry of the ADS3, you just identify two different points which is connected by the isometry. And then you obtain non trivial topology. And that's good enough for the ADS3. Why that? Because ADS3 is so simple, you do not have any local degrees of freedom. Therefore, you have non triviality only for the global structure. Locally, everything is ADS3, at least for the pure reality. If you have a matter, it does modify, but just consider pure ADC, uh, pure ADC, okay, for simplicity, or well, for the universality, okay. If you have a matter, you can back react and you can change the geometry, but that needs a specific matter to exist. But as has you consider the pure gravity, okay, that's ubiquitous. As has you consider the gravity, pure gravity is there, okay, as a truncated system of the gravity, okay. So we consider pure gravity where there is no uh, local dynamics, okay at least from the gravitational degrees of freedom. Therefore, only global non trivial structure is needed, okay? Therefore, in order to consider the, in order to obtain the non trivial global structure, we're gonna do what I already mentioned. Prepare space, identify two points related by the isometry, identify it, and then we create the non trivial geometry. The simplest example is a prepare R2, okay? X and Y. Now, manifestly, you have a translation of invariance along the y direction, okay? Suppose we translate along y direction into zero to L, okay? It's related by the isometry of the translation of invariance. Now you identify between point zero to point L, okay? What does we obtain, okay? What, what do we obtain, okay? We obtain just cylinder, okay? So R2 becomes cylinder, not to be able to push, okay? This is just simple compactification we study, the easiest compactification we study. And then we do the very similar thing for other stuff. Find the isometry, identify two points related by the isometry, okay? Then we obtain non trivial structure, and we keep this on and on and on in, until we obtain non trivial interesting one more, okay? This is essentially what we're gonna do here, okay? Good. <clears throat> so this is our mission. If there's a translational symmetry, isometry, just identify, you obtain the cylinder. What we're gonna do is uh, just seek for the isometry of the ADS3, upper half plane, find it, okay? Identify it, obtain non trivial topology, non trivial geometry. In the end, it turns out to be multi boundary one holes. Good. So we're gonna do in this T equals zero stress. So, so, okay. Um, so I do not have so much time left. So let me just briefly do it, okay? So point one, this is the ADS3, as I mentioned, in the embedding coordinate, okay? This ADS3 can be represented by using matrix, okay? This is two by two matrix, whose ingredient is this embedding coordinate, U, X, Y, V, okay? This can be written using this embedding coordinate matrix element. Okay, obviously DM is just this one, just add a D in here. This ADS3 can be written as this using this matrix representation. Okay, I hope it's clear. Okay, you just have this DM, take determinant, and that's become this. And determinant is one, okay, of this one simply become this. Okay, so I don't do anything. I'm not doing anything, okay? Just three bears, three bears, the really lighting of the same movement. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. But now we have more manifestly the isometry of the space time. Why is that? Now we are interested in T equals zero, that is V equals zero. But before that, okay, then let me write. The isometry is easy to obtain because once we have the matrix representation of the ADS3, okay? Since we have determinant structure, for the metric and also constraint is determinant. Okay. If you just multiply this matrix M and some matrix whose determinant is one, since everything is written in the form of the determinant, this formula doesn't change. Right? Suppose you multiply this two by two matrix, some SL2 matrix, S for the special is important because the determinant is one. Okay, that represent. Then the determinant condition is unmodified. So for example, 
M is here. You just multiply the SL2 matrix from left and right, okay? But since this condition is written in terms of determinant, okay? The, the formula doesn't change at all, okay? But apparent coordinate does change, okay? So this connect, this isometric connect, one space-time point of the ADS3 into the other point of the ADS3, that's related by the isometry of the ADS3, okay? Just like if you have a transformation invariance, pointing here is related to this point here by the transformational isometry, okay? We do just the same thing, okay? So that's isometry. Given the isometry, we just identify two points related by the isometry, okay? Then we have a non-trivial topology, and that's what we are doing. But just one comment, we are interested in T equals zero, space-like space structure, okay? So that corresponds to V equals zero in this embedding. Therefore, we want to consider the SL2R from left and right, but we do not want to change the T equals zero slice into non-zero T. We want to maintain T equals zero slice into another T equals zero, or T equals zero slice into the same T equals zero slice after the isometry. In other words, given the T equals zero space time, again, given the T equals zero space, we want to change the isometry between one point and one point, both are the T equals zero slice. So that gives us one condition. We want to maintain V equals zero. So that's mean here is zero, here is zero, V equals zero. So that's mean the matrix of diagonal element is equal. Okay. So what is the gamma one and the gamma two, generic gamma and gamma two, that maintain this V equals zero condition in other words, of diagonal element is equal, okay? It's easy to work out if you prepare the gamma one and gamma two the same gamma, okay? Now you can show that V equals zero, that is v equals zero, that corresponds to t equals zero in the Poincare coordinate, is maintained. So after the evolution, you can check this. Okay. So in other words, if, v is, uh, if gamma one and gamma two, here and here is not the same, you change from t equals zero slice into other time slice. Okay. That's what we don't want to do. So since we are considering the uh, space like one hole, t equals zero slice, we want to connect the two points dated by the isometry, of the same t equals zero slice, and that is written by the, this gamma, which gamma and gamma two is the same type. So just one SL2 transformation connect two points, okay? And that's what we see. Okay, so good. So once we specify what is a gamma, which is given by SL2, we can specify what is the isometry we are using, okay? Any gamma, which gives the one point of the t equals zero to the other point in t equals zero, and that gives a uh, uh, isometry. Okay. Now we identify and we will then not to approach. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. So uh, just one side comment. So given the gamma, which is a b c d with this condition, okay, you can you can explicitly check that the transformation of the this by this gives equivalently in the upper half plane coordinate, the transformation of the G, where G is X plus I Z, small Z, this is capital G, goes to this transformation, that's you can show it, okay? So we know all of the isometry of the T equals zero slice. Now we use it and then create non trivial topology. That's what we're gonna do. So are there any questions so far? Okay, good. So let me proceed. Okay, good. So, so I, I, I just skip this part because it's a bit uh, in detail. But as you can see that this gamma has a three element. One, A, B, C, and D is determined. Okay, there's a three element. And then for each three element, you can specify what this mean and what this mean in the half, half plane. So I just call the result. And then using that, I want to construct the one hole. okay? So one, so the, this gamma has a three element, A, B, C, D, but A, B, C, A, D minus B, C equal one. So we have three independent equilibrium. And I just call the result. It's made by three generation, and one is a dilatation, okay? Dilatation is like this, okay? So this is the example, D is A inverse, and B equals, equals A case, okay? And that connect uh, upper half plane in this way. 
capital G become a, a square capital G. Okay, so that's that, that you can check that, that that is just rescaling of the position. Okay, so for example, if we use this isometry to identify, say, in this point related by this isometry into this point, then you're gonna consider you, you, you can construct a, you, you can construct the eternal black hole like configuration. And that's easy to see because suppose you start with here, okay? You go here, up to here, and then here, this is identified as this. So this becomes simply circle. So it's like cylinder-like structure, okay? So this is just one boundary in the beginning, and this is the another boundary, okay? Now, originally, before we, we do this identification, you have one boundary. But once you do this identification, fundamental domain is only in here. And since this gives one boundary, Jaza is a one boundary, and this is a bulk which behaves like cylinder, you construct that as a Einstein low temperature -like structure. So that's that's so that, that, that is the structure. Okay, this is one boundary and the other boundary, and that is here and here, and this is a bulk. Okay, the neck region of here correspond to neck region here, and again. This is 83, so the horizon area is actually just one circle, okay? This circle plays the role of the horizon, okay? This length is related to the black hole entropy, or using the RT formula, it's related to the entanglement entropy, and that is specified by the moduli from here to here, the geodesic distance, okay? And that exactly is the isometry we use. We identify this and this connected by A square or mu square in this notation, okay? And that gives the area. So in this way, we have the two boundary eternal black hole like geometry. That's by simply this dilatation operation. Okay. I hope it's clear. What I'm doing is very simple. And there's other operation. I will not go through it because of the lack of the time, but you can do it, you can do it, okay? So let me skip this. So suppose we do the one operation, which is a dilatation which identify this and this. Okay, by that you create the two boundary one hole. Okay, one is here and the other is here. Okay? Now, in addition, you conduct the second isometry identification. What is the second isometry uh, identification we're gonna use? That is, circle in here is identified with circle in here. Okay. We can construct such an identification using the SLT of the gamma, which I mentioned. Okay. It's not the dilatation, it's some combination of the A, B, C, D, non trivial structure, but that can allow to identify this and this. Know that the orientation is different, orientation is flipped, and that allows us to have the fundamental domain only here. Okay. Okay. This and this is excluded because of the isometry. The same is here. Here and here you identify, then this region and this region is no more fundamental region. You can consider only this region. Why? Because this is the same as this and the same as this and so on. So it's related by the isometry. So it's enough to consider only this. Okay. The same is here. It's enough to consider only this outside. So suppose we do such a second uh, isometry identification. What we're going to obtain? We obtain three boundary one hole. Why is that? So here is a one boundary. This and this is identified, so it's just one boundary. Okay. Now suppose you start with here. You go here, you reach here, but that is the same as here. So you go here and then you go here. But this is, remember, the same as this due to the second identification. So we have second boundary starting from here, go here, come back here, here, and then this is the same as here. So that's second boundary. The third boundary, we can easily see that this boundary. Why? Start with here, that's the same as here, and then you go here. So it's a, again one boundary. Okay. So you obtain three boundary. And then now you can imagine that you can do the same in here. Okay. Again, fundamental domain is limited here. You obtain fourth boundary. So that is a structure we obtain. One boundary A and the other boundary A prime and B prime, B, and connected to the bulk. And pictorially, this is the figure. Okay. So the, 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 don't worry, this is very simple thing. You just identify what is isometry, and then you divide the space by the isometry. 
okay? Quotient, mathematically people call it, okay? Then you can obtain the total configuration of the upper half plane, like this, what is the fundamental domain, okay? There's a several moduli, okay? Moduli is a specification of the shape of this fundamental domain. Once you specify it by the specifying what is the isometry you're going to use, then whole geometry is completely determined and it's fixed. And that's as simple as constructing the sheet. Yes, please. <clears throat> I have a question about uh, the module, right? So also, can you change the temperature for? Yes, yes, if you are. Ah, uh, yes. So temperature is specified given one boundary. For that boundary, it looks like there's a RT surface or horizon. And then behind that is, he cannot see it at this classical. So given one boundary, okay, we, we I'm I gonna explain later about the moduli, but once moduli, which is determined by the, how do you specify the isometry, okay? Then the shape is fixed completely. And then given that, you know, what is the RT surface in here? That determine what is the entropy of the black hole, at least seen from this observer, this boundary. And that entropy determine what is the temperature and so on, so, mm. so everything is uniquely fixed. I see. So giving the moduli completely is equivalent to specifying what is the temperature for each boundary, what is the structure, because giving the moduli completely is the same as specifying the geometry completely. That result in the specifying the RT surface completely, and that result determine the entropy of the black hole completely. As a result, all of the thermodynamical nature of the, each black hole is uniquely specified. Is it clear? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. So that's, that's I have so far. Has there any question? Ah, uh, please. So, so, so in, in, in this way, you can construct a multiple one hole throat. And uh, I have, a, so, so I wonder if he, if there is any case that, that two or more than three, more than two one hole throat may intersect. Uh, are they always disconnected? Oh, it, it's always connected. Hmm? This is a T equals the slice. Yes. Now, now, what I mean connected is that there's a space-like trajectory from one boundary to the other. No, no, the, uh, one whole throat, Einstein, Rosen, Bridge. So, for example, maybe you can, uh, this gamma one, this uh, dash line, oh. correspond to a one, one whole throat, Einstein, Rosen, Bridge. Oh, I, are you saying that as any two boundary, which is, we so from one one boundary A, let's say the other boundary B, which is connected without passing through the horizon? Is that the question? No. Um, my question is that you have multiple uh, one hole throat yeah. because you have multiple uh, boundary infinity. So, so L L one and L A, for example, in this picture, mm -hmm. and L A. This uh, red dashed line circle and the blue circle, mm -hmm. are they always separated? Yes. Ah, I see. Ah, oh, oh, okay. In some limit, it could be mm -hmm. that's possible. Ah. Yes, but ah. we consider generic situation and in generic configuration. Uh -huh. uh, maybe that depends on the, how you find this. Uh... What's right? Uh -huh. Depend on the module, in some specific situation, it could be that this LA and LA prime may coincide with this L1, that's possible. But as we consider generic module, they are different. For example, LA, B, and this, then we have this, or this, and so on, so on. Generically, it's different. But in some specific case of the module space, it could be different, that's possible. Is it okay? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I have only seven minutes, so I just, go through, skip all this, but that, that's an important point I just mentioned, okay? So as I mentioned, once we specify the isometry, okay, how the fundamental domain behave is specified, okay? That is equivalent to specify what is the moduli in this upper half plane, okay? Once you specify, say, for example, in the simplest example, paper, piece of the paper, identifies the length L, okay, that's the isometry, you obtain the cylinder, but now you obtain the cylinder has a circle length L that determined by the your identification of the isometry point. Okay. Once you specify the isometry by length L, the moduli of the cylinder L is specified. Okay. The same is here. Okay. So what is the moduli we obtain J? Again, we have four boundary. One, 
two, three combine, four combine. Okay. So to have that, we just do the three isometry animation. Here and here, here and sorry, here and here. Let me change the color. Here and here, and here and here. Okay. So we do three animation. How much modular do we have in here? From the identification one, this mu square, or from here to here, that's a mu square. One moduli, okay? And the other moduli is from here to here, and that is way the center of the circle, okay? That's, I call it as a C2 and C1 prime. By the way, I put the center in here, zero, okay? C2 and C1, that's the center of this circle, okay? So we have two more moduli, and then what is a, Semicircle identifications radius. Okay. R2 and R1. You can choose whatever R2 and R1. Okay. So we have four additional moduli to create the second, uh, third band. Again, four furthermore. Sorry, this is prime. R1 prime, R2 prime. Four additional moduli we need to create the fourth band. So what do we have then? One plus four plus four, go nine. That's a difficult calculation. So nine modular we have, okay, to specify the modular. So that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's all modular. Once we know that, all of the shape of the geometry is fixed. What is the RT surface is fixed. What is a black hole seen from one boundary is fixed. As a result, all the thermodynamic nature of the black hole is specified, temperature and so on, so on. Everything is specified, okay? Good, so I just, I have to go through a bit over time. I'm sorry for the organizer. Just give me 10 more minutes and then I'm gonna finish, okay? But to study all of the modular is quite difficult. So just for simplicity, I assume some restricted modular space. That is G2 symmetry. What is a G2 symmetry? It just simply means that this and this is mirror. Meaning that once you specify C2, C2 prime is just minus of the C2 and so on so on. In this way, we just kill five of the modular. Because once we specify here, it's specified here. So I'm gonna eliminate four of the moduli. Okay. So I just for simplicity assume the G2 symmetry to eliminate four of the moduli to have only five moduli left. Now I want to see by the energy flow, which we're gonna do it by hand, how these moduli change as a result, how these four boundary one four does change as a result of this decoherence process what we're gonna end up at the end of the process. That's the main question. Okay, that's I'm gonna show it and that's it. Okay, so this is just formula. You don't have to need, you don't have to sheet actually, okay? But what I'm saying is that once we specify the moduli, all of the horizon is specified, all the black hole nature is specified. That's all I want to say. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. Good. So modular parameter evolution, so we're gonna do it. So how are we gonna do it? So as I mentioned, we have five parameters, okay? So you have to specify how the five moduli should evolve, okay? That's we're gonna do it by hand. Then how does it reach? What is our final end point of the four boundary one? Good, so let me skip it, okay? So at least we're gonna do for it. So for example, at least for the observer A here and A prime here, as I mentioned, see some horizon, some horizon, okay? So it looks like some black hole seen from this observer really here and seen from this observer here. We want to make the temperature here and here the same, okay? So how do you do that? Given the moduli, we can see what is the entropy of the black hole seen from the bounded A, and then so does A prime, and that's given by, by the moduli as in previous slide, okay? Now, due to the Beckett's Hawking entropy formula, okay? Given the black hole entropy, okay? That is related to the mass of the black hole seen from the one boundary, okay? Given the mass, okay? You can obtain what is the black hole. This is the same as BDG black hole for at least for the one, uh, one boundary of Zappa because he cannot see behind the horizon. See some mass from observable A, prime, okay? If mass is different, temperature is different. If mass is the same, we see both of them, she's the same mass black hole. 
same into the black hole, therefore same temperature black hole, okay? So what we're gonna do is that in the beginning, in the beginning, for the observer A, see some mass, okay? Given the moduli. For the A prime, see the other mass, okay? And they are not the same, that we prepare as initial setting. And let them evolve, let them evolve, until their mass become the same at the end of the evolution, okay? That's what we're gonna do it, okay? So here, T, okay? The, the, this T is not the same as time of the Poincare recurrence because we are always considering the T equals the slice of the Poincare coordinate. Maybe T is a bad notation, I mean, we should use S instead, okay? S is just moduli, okay? Moduli, how S change from zero to something, how does the moduli space change, okay? That's what we are doing. We are not following the time evolution. We are looking at the moduli evolution. So this T represents the moduli parameter. How does it change? So in the beginning, T equal to zero, okay? Mass is not the same, but we're gonna evolve in such a way that this and this become the same as the final point, okay? So this we do it by hand. We prepare the two different temperature for A and A prime, T different mass for A and A prime in the beginning, let them flow energy between them, and then how does it reach until the mass of A and A prime the same? Therefore, so does temperature, okay? That's what we need. So we have two conditions which imposed by hand. Due to the G2 symmetry, B and B prime is a four. B, B, B and B prime is the same, okay? That's two. What is another three condition we need it, okay? The other three condition, let me skip it. We have five parameter, we already specified two by the mass change. The other three condition we need. Now, three condition came from the following. Geometrically, the picture we have has a manifest inequality. What is this? Mu square must be bigger than C1 plus R1, okay? That's this condition, okay? And the other is the same. This C1 minus R1 must be bigger than C2 plus R2. That's the second condition. The third condition is C2 minus R2 must be bigger than one, okay? To, to this figure makes sense. Okay. So this is a three inequality. Now this three inequality can be written as three equation by preparing some positive quantity G1, G2, G3. Now this is very trivial. Suppose you have this, just prepare mu square minus C1 minus R1, we define as a G3, and that's positive. So it's an equivalent statement, okay? We have three positive quantity to satisfy this quantity, this inequality. Now, the third question is that we specify this G1, G2, G3, three positive quantity somehow by hand, okay? That is our choice. Once we specify this G1, G2, G3 by hand, okay, this is a bit ad hoc situation, but once we specify this three positive inequality, all this is satisfied. And because we give the three furthermore condition, in addition to the two condition, which is related to the mass condition of the A and A prime, we specify five moduli space completely. Given five moduli, we specify five moduli evolution completely. We can solve it completely, okay? Once we solve it, we obtain how does it evolve. That's a situation, okay? But this evolution is not time evolution. It's evolution with a moduli space. So because I'm running out of time, let me just give the result, some result, okay? So T, the moduli parameter cannot go forever because we, we, we're gonna evolve until the A and A prime mass become the same. So it's a limited range of the time evolution, limited range of the moduli space evolution, we're gonna follow, okay? So in our parameter range, this just become four, okay? So from zero to four, four is a point where the two of the mass become the same and temperature is the same. So what is the result? The result is following, uh, let me skip it. So result is following. So from zero to four, we follow the evolution, and then some of the moduli is completely specified, many or all of the moduli is completely specified. And what we obtain in the end is just L1, okay? I wanna tell you what is L1 in the end, but L1 becomes zero complete, okay? From non-zero to zero. So what is L1? L1 is, sorry for that, sorry for that. L1 is, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, L1. So A, A prime, we just flow the energy until the mass for this black hole, for this black hole is the same. And what we obtain in the end is L1, which is the area in here, was a neck 
region in here, that becomes the HN. Okay. So this is, I will mention that this and this is totally disconnected at the end of the modular space. Okay, that this figure is shown. Okay, L1 becomes zero. Sorry for that, L1 becomes zero. Okay, L1 becomes zero, and that's this result. So once we show that L1 becomes zero, okay, we can show that there's no classical correlation between A and B. And that's it for my talk. Okay, sorry for going over the time. What is the result? Shit, sorry for that. So we show that L1 goes to zero. That means following. So L1 becomes zero. So that means this regime and this regime is disconnected. Okay. Now the entanglement entropy, what well, was well, the von Neumann entropy of the is a, a prime. Okay. What is this? It's a von Neumann entropy or entanglement entropy tracing out B and B prime. Okay. That is given by this actually this neck. Okay. Or precisely the smaller of the this and this or this, but since this becomes zero, the smallest one is this one, okay? So S A A prime, that is a von Neumann entropy after the tracing over the B and B prime, becomes zero once L1 becomes zero, okay? So this is the end of the decoherence process. But once we have that, we have the following. Because of G2 symmetry, S B B prime also goes to zero. We assume that in the beginning, whole space A, A prime, B, B prime is pure. Therefore, S, A, A prime, B, B prime, that's a whole system, is zero from the beginning. Okay. But since at the end of the decoherence, we have S, A, A prime zero, and so does B, B prime due to the G2 symmetry, that means mutual information between A, A prime and B, B prime goes to zero at the end of the decoherence. Now, given this, okay, given this, because of the nature of the mutual information that if you trace over furthermore degrees of freedom, mutual information always decrease. Now this is equivalent to the uh, strong subadditivity nature of the uh, entanglement entropy. You can show this directly, but intuitively A and B or A prime and B B prime is entangled, okay, somehow. But if you furthermore trace over that information is lost. Okay, so mutual information never increase by tracing out. It's always equal at most or decrease. So because of that nature, if you are given this becomes zero and furthermore tracing over A prime and B prime, it cannot increase. So if this is zero, this is always zero. So we reach the conclusion, at least from the bulk dual geometrically, mutual information with A and B is zero, but that implies not only quantum entanglement, there is no even classical correlation between A and B. That is seen from the wormhole geometry evolution of the modular space. Okay. So I'm sorry for going over the time. So that's a conclusion. There is no correlation because of this conclusion between A and B, both classically and quantum mechanically. Now, there's a several open question, which I should not mention because I'm going over the time. There's just one quote that we assume many things. G2 symmetry, we assume, okay? And furthermore, the modular space evolution, we restrict it. We have not studied all of the modular space. Once we relax some of the condition, how does it evolve? That is an open question, okay? To study more generically, how does the modular space of the four boundary one hole or multi boundary one hole evolve? And that is interesting. Another interesting point is that we study the multi boundary one hole, and it's a bit, Ironically strange that in two boundary one hole, we know what is a dual. It's a sum of heat up. But once we have the multi boundary one hole, what is a microscopic, you know, dual CFD description of that one hole? It's not precisely known as, as I see it. Okay, if you know it, please let me know. Okay. So instead of the using, relying on the gravity description directly in the boundary or spin degrees of freedom of the toy model, how does this multi boundary? Geometry is reflected as a state in the entangled structure and how does it evolve, okay? Analyzing directly in the safety side is also interesting, okay? So I'm sorry for going over the time, but that's it for my talk. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, any question or comment? Uh, 
Uh, じゃあ、えー、森さん、プリーズ。I have two questions.、Uh, what, is, uh, what, what, what is the importance of,、uh, regarding the environment as a、uh, one whole? What is the importance of the environment as a one whole? So I, I, I am asking why do I prepare as a warm, another one whole as a heat bus? Is that the question? Yeah, yeah. In, if we want to consider just a decoherence,、mm -hmm. uh, environment can be anything. But... Right. But if it's an environment can be anything, then it may not have the geometric description. That is the demerit. But suppose you prepare another copy of the warm hole, the same r e g l e freedom, then we know at least for sure that gives a geometric e description. So, suppose you have the one hole and the other one hole as the same design. We know it has a geometric description. We combine, we are for sure that it has a four boundary description. How does it work? That is our merit we consider. Oh, so just、uh, you want to for sure a decoherence can indeed occur. So that's why. We want to analyze it in the geometric way because that is more easy.、Uh -huh. That's the main so, Alternatively, you can use another.、Uh, Uh, uh, another holographic, uh, uh, no one hole, but uh, uh, something.、Yeah. If you have some other known system which has manifest geometrical description, you, you can do it. You can do it. There's no, there's no difficulty for that. But this is just our choice for the analysis. And the second question is uh, uh, maybe related to a、uh, uh, safety point of view. And uh, Uh, when you want to study the、uh, classical correlation versus、uh, quantum correlation, maybe you can uh, uh, study bell op、uh, expectation value of bell operator.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, in this setup,、uh, I, it seems that、uh, the L1 corresponds to some, somehow the expectation value of bell operator. But、uh, do you have any comments on that? I mean, she, 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 she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's bigger than two. Or, yeah. So, well, I, I do not study the manifest connection between that, but for sure, what I know is that if there's a quantum entanglement, okay, something else, then it's bigger than two, right? Less than two, maybe not as good as two times square root two. So, at least what we have seen is that there's at the end of the decoherence process, there's no classical n o r quantum entanglement. Okay. Therefore,、uh, CHSH, Bell o n the parameter is certainly less than two, or、well, at least two. Okay, so it's a classical level of the coherence, but we do not have even the classical correlation. So, what is the result?、Oh. But, but, but that, that's what we know for sure. I see. Thank you. So, Takanagi、uh, san, please. Yeah, I have actually.、Oh, thank you very much. Very interesting talk. I have、uh, two questions. One is、uh, so I think your final conclusion is related to the monogamy of entanglement. If two, two bodies are strongly entangled, then it cannot be entangled to each other. And this is related to strong subjectivity, I think, also. And also, but if we think of some classical gravity dual, we have also further stronger.、Uh, Property like monogamy or mutual information. For example, we don't have any GHG state. Right, and、right. Uh, my question is that how this kind of property、uh, is related to your also calculation. So you, you are talking about much、uh, boundary one hole. And、right. one more question is about the whole, about, I'm very curious about this time evolution. How can we some realize some reconnection of this one hole and the time evolution? But of course, it, it,、uh, probably we expect some topology change. I think it's maybe. <coughs> but but in, in, as you pointed out, in CFT side, definitely we should have such a time evolution. Good, good, good. So let, let me answer step by step. So, so the time evolution, so real time evolution is actually difficult. So we may say what we are doing is、uh, like, like following. Let, let me explain. So, you know, this Gregory l a f l a m i instability. If you want to know how does a Gregory l a f l a m i instability evolve, As a time evolution, time means a physical time evolution, then it's usually hard. You need lots of numerical analysis and so on. So, what people instead do is that you slowly, slowly change the moduli. You just keep looking for the static 
static solution mm -hmm. of the how the horizon shape become changing more and more step by step. And then how does it evolve? So all the shaking is as integral regular from instability that you have the horizon of the cylinder, that horizon become bumpy. And then at the end of the uh, evolution, the, the neck point become to singular or pinch it off or so. So they just look for the static solution as a snapshot. Okay, the time evolution is very well, quasi, uh, uh, quasi static, quasi static evolution. And then how does it evolve? Mm. That's totally different from the rapid time evolution of the modular space. If you have more rapid evolution of the horizon shape, then mm -hmm. there's a kinetic energy for that, and that may back react to the evolution and so on. So that's a difficult question. So what we are doing is more like, you know, the, the ban, uh, many of the snapshot of the time evolution, if the moduli slowly, slowly in quasi static way keep changing. Now, as you pointed out, if it's a real time evolution, then we have to consider the effect of the kinetic energy and how does the back effect and so on. And that's a very interesting question, but at least we do not have any idea how we can do it. It's, it's a more tough question. I see. Uh, actually, do you expect everything is described by holographic uh, oh, no. uh, configuration? Oh, or I do we need to include some kind of non-holographic uh, states or non-holographic geometry to describe such a... So I do not expect, even in the limit, we have the large central charge and all of the requirement, like in a sparse condition, so on, so on, blah, 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 everything is satisfied. I do not expect all of the change of the evolution of the CFT can not necessarily be described by the holographic way. As you pointed out, there's some input I see. Of the, and so on, so on. So, what we study so far is very, very limited modular space. I think that's fair to say. But that is for this limited modular space where at least we have the multi-boundary connected smooth geometry. This is a valid description. But as you pointed out, there's some inequality and so on, which may not be satisfied in more generic situation, but satisfied only in the holographic situation. I think in such equality is satisfied because we have the multi-boundary geometric description. Okay. But in more generic situation, it's hard. But since my motivation is to study how the connection of the wormhole is related to the entanglement, instead of the how the generic evolution of the shift state, we are interested in more connected geometry. So in that sense, restrict our attention to the geometrical wormhole is probably reasonable to me. And that's my point. That does answer my question. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Any other question or comment? Uh, Gojin-san, please. Oh, yeah, I just want to ask I want, as a, one of the authors. Uh, you are the author of the... Oh, yeah, yeah, OK, I'm the one. So no, no, I mean, OK, so I, I don't, uh, OK, I'm not, I mean, that uh, I don't want to ask a question to Izuka-san, but I mean, other, I mean, that the audience, uh, so uh, as a, one of the authors of the paper. Um, so what we... I mean, what we trying to yeah describe is as what as Izukasan said. I mean, um, okay, trying to uh, find a gravity dual over this uh, uh, classical correlation, and uh, okay, so find okay, I find it dif very difficult, and um, <clears throat> so so yeah, so one of the difficulty okay is that okay, so you can see this uh, one of the difficulty by I mean contradiction. So suppose that okay, this classical correlation have a has a nice, I mean, that the gravity dual. Then this classical correlation obeys okay, all of these entropy inequalities. Uh, if we assume that, uh, I mean, this RT type, I mean, that the formula holds for, I mean, that uh, uh, computing this classical correlation. Um, so, 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 my question is, I mean, that okay. So, is, is there any class of, I mean, that the classical correlations which very resembles uh, to the quantum entanglement, but I mean, that are still slightly different. I mean. I think I mean that uh, okay. There's a chance I mean that uh, to I mean uh, reproduce I mean that this kind of classical correlation in the I mean uh, geometric uh, way. Uh, so I, I'm not okay. So I'm just just wondering for uh, I want to ask to uh, quantum information people. I mean that uh, such a class of this classical correlation is known or not. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay. 
That's it for my talk, thanks. Ah, so can, can I one co make a, one comment that I'm not sure about the, about classical uh, correlation? So if you have some classical correlation, we can always purify into larger Hilbert space. And uh, what we learn also from area safety is always we can purify, right? So, uh, we start from canonical ensemble to uh, full, yeah, yeah eternal yeah. black hole, like also yeah, in yeah. and talk, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that the fifth the total space fifth, is always yeah, pure. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the thing is they, that yeah, the purified not, state may not have a I mean, gravity dual. For example, if I consider separated the state on I mean to I mean that the systems to to mm. a bipartite system, and then okay, so what you get by the purification is a GHG type of state. And, uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So often we encounter yeah GHG state. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Indeed, one typical decoherence model also leads mm -hmm. to some states which. Mm -hmm. Mix of state, but we can purify it into GHG state. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But, but oh, anyway, yeah. anyway, always we can relate, relate it to pure state, I think. Ah, okay. yeah, so yeah. As, yeah, as Tomonori says, I think in the end, the question is how we can find gravity dual to GHG, like some more general yeah, yeah, yeah. pure states. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, all, all, always, for example, when we think about as, like as a major like EOP entanglement of purification, that measures also classical correlation. And that also. Uh, it's also non-trivial result in holography, but that's case what happens initially if we look uh, into the total space is a pure state and then uh, original uh, or original correlation is quantum entanglement, but if we trace out some part of the space, then it just changes into classical correlation, yeah. just naming is changes. Mm -hmm. So I think the difference between classical correlation and the quantum correlation also a little bit subtle in that sense. It's quite uh -huh. re relative. Yeah, I agree. But one, once you, I mean, that the fix the, I mean, that the bipartite systems, then okay, mm. so I mean, that you can talk about it, right? And um, okay, yeah, so yeah, that's true. But uh, classical, I mean, for classical equation, mm. the relative entropy right, of right, this right. fragment has to vanish. And uh, well, the thing I do not like to this purification process is you have to prepare different degrees of freedom. You want to consider yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, oh, of course, of course. I, I agree. So, but, uh, mm. Yeah, but uh, for GR, we can expand the geometry, extend geometry. Mm -hmm. And somehow we often do it in area safety. So, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, I don't know the dual of GHG, so I have nothing to say about it. But mm. I think, yeah, it's a yeah, very interesting question. Any yeah. other personal comment? Okay. Okay, so if not, uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thanks. Any announcement from the organizer? Uh, as usual, I just uh, put the remote link, I mean, for, for the lunch break today, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's finish uh, this session. Uh, see you uh, after lunch. Okay, thank you very much for participation. So I will, I will close this session. This. Monimai san, thank you very much for chairing this session. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.